Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who is looking for his fifth finisher's medal at the 2022 Chicago Marathon. And here are some of my top Chicago Marathon tips. First, I'm gonna say get to the expo early and that's gonna be a theme for a lot of the tips here. Uh, everything that happens at the Chicago Marathon is generally very efficient, but there's just so many people that come in for this race that the later you get to things, the longer things are going to take. And the expo is definitely a great example of that. The other thing that you want to think about is how to get to the expo. Now, a lot of times people will try to take the L or the subway system that's available in Chicago. Keep in mind that the L is half a mile from the train tracks to the front door of the convention center. Then you got to walk through the giant convention center as well. So it could be a lot of walking and time on feet that you might not want to spend the day before or two days before uh, the marathon. So uh, the best way in my mind to get there is by bicycle. There's Divi, which is a bike share system that operates in the city of Chicago, where as long as you can have a credit card or you can pay with your phone, you can borrow a bicycle, write it down to the convention center. There should be plenty of corrals for you to park those bikes and return them to a different corral. And you should have a much shorter walk than if you took the subway. So that's gonna be the number one way that I recommend. Or if you have your own bike, if you're a local, there's also lots of bike racks and places where you can lock up your bike. Last year, I tried driving because I had a bunch of places that I need to go on the Friday uh, before the marathon last year. And the parking lots, they, are spaced really far out because it's a giant convention center. There's lots of parking that's available, but between getting through the garage and walking over to the convention center, that also is still a lot of walking and took a lot of time, like just getting in and out of the parking garages. So that's not necessarily going to be the most efficient way to get there. There's also Uber and taxis that are available. And for those of you that want to walk the least, that's probably the best way to do it because it'll drop you off right in front. But again, the later in the day that you go to the expo, the more and more traffic and congestion is really gonna build up by the expo. And there can be quite a very long time to wait to get your ride. The next thing I'll talk about is, again, getting there early, but for the marathon itself. If you look through the participant guide, and I know you guys all read the thing from front to back, so you guys already know this, but I'll reiterate that the marathon recommends that you get to the race area if you're in wave one, to get there at 5.30 in the morning for a 7.30 a.m. race start. Yes, they're telling you to get there two hours early. And that's because there is quite a bit of walking that you'll have to do once you get past kind of like the main gates that the general public isn't allowed to go past. There's quite a bit of walking. There's gear check that you want to do that you're going to want to hit the bathrooms and then you want to navigate to your corral. So it's going to take a while at those gates. There is security. So if you have a gear check bag or other bag that you're bringing with you, they're going to be looking through that. That also takes a lot of time. And so again, you want to get there early so that way you can avoid the biggest like crush of people that are gonna come later. Also, please look in your participant guide for the recommended kind of like entry point for you to go to when you are getting to the race, depending on what corral that you're in, because that's gonna all funnel you in the correct way so that you have the least amount of walking from the the main entry gate that you go through, then to get to gear check, and then to get to your starting corral. So it's all kind of very well organized, but a lot of times when you get there at 5.30 in the morning or six or hopefully not 6.30 in the morning, you start seeing big crowds of people and you think that's the area that I must need to go. But a lot of times the busiest entry gates are the ones that are close to the train stations or to the hotels. And so there's lots of times faster ways to get in if you just go to the gate that you're supposed to go into. And that's gonna reduce the total amount of walking that you're also gonna have to do. Keep in mind that you're probably gonna end up walking in total, probably about a half mile to a mile, just getting from the gate to gear check all the way to your corral. So there's a lot of space for everyone, but because there's so many people, there's a lot of space in between everything that's happening. So give yourself plenty of time for that. Chicago Marathon has plenty of porta potties for everyone. They do a really good job of having a total number of porta potties that is adequate for the size of the crowd that's going to be there. But 
a lot of times there feels like there's bathroom issues because of the fact that everyone wants to get towards the corral and go to the bathrooms that are over there. And because of some space limitations, there just aren't as many porta potties over in that area. So one of the things that I like to do is just kind of stay over in the gear check area, do all of my warm up and stuff over there, go to the bathroom over there, and then wait to head over to the corrals until I actually want to be into the corrals. Now, if you get there at 5.30 in the morning, you're gonna be getting there in the dark. It won't start to be light in Chicago around Chicago Marathon time until about 6 or 6.15 or so, although you might get some pre-dawn light a little bit before that. So be prepared for it to be pitch black and be prepared for it to be chilly, even if it's going to be ultimately a hot race day. So make sure you're bringing your throwaway layers of clothes and make sure that in your gear check bag, you're packing yourself some warmer, dry clothes that you could at least, if not change into, put on top of your race kit so that way you're not cold after race and you can have a good time hanging out and celebrating with all of your fellow marathoners. The other thing that I will remind you guys though is that even for those of you in wave one that are on the 7.30 start, the corrals close at 7.20, but they do get a lot more full, almost uncomfortably full, a little bit before that. Even when the corrals aren't closed, they might start to get really full and you won't always fit into your corral sometimes. So you don't wanna be kind of like standing in the grass on the outside waiting for the corral to kind of like loosen its way up towards the front before you can get in there. You want to get in there, again, a little bit early. Again, that's the theme for the Chicago Marathon. Do almost everything a little bit earlier than you're normally expecting for those of you who have run many marathons before. One last thing to note about the corrals is that there are multiple pace groups available for each finishing time. So don't worry if you are in say corral C and you think that the pace group for your goal time is gonna be in corral B and how do I get up to them? Don't worry about it too much because there's probably going to be another pace group for that time in your corral as well. Once the race starts, the main thing that I will warn you guys is that GPS is gonna be completely unreliable for about the first like couple of miles, about three miles or so, and that's because of two things. One, it's because you're running through downtown Chicago. There's lots of tall buildings creating urban canyons that make it really hard for watch-based GPS. Uh, and also, there's certain parts where you're running under underpasses, so you would literally be underground. So again, the GPS is gonna be, have a hard time keeping track of you. So you're going to be wanting to rely on two things. One, if you're running with a pace group, just trust the pace group, fall in with them. You're probably going to be a little bit overexcited anyway. So use the pace group to help keep you calm and controlled in those first few miles of the marathon. Or if you're not going to be running with the pace group, make sure that you're looking at the mile markers and there's going to be mile markers. There's not going to be a clock every mile, but there'll be mile markers at each mile point. You'll be able to hit the lap button on your watch. So it'll at least you'll be able to know how long it took you to run the last mile. Now, one of the questions I get most frequently is what is my, my top race tip for the Chicago Marathon? And it'll be to stay calm through miles like 14 through about 18. Now, if you think about the Chicago Marathon as like a clover loop, you'll go up a little bit, come back down, you'll go west a little bit and come back in, and then you go south a little bit and then come back up. I would say that Western clover, it's really easy to get overexcited. And that's something that I've done pretty much every single time that I've run the Chicago Marathon, but you wanna make sure that you don't get too excited there and then end up having to pay for it on the next stretch of the race, which happens to be like kind of the quietest stretch in between Greektown, which is when you come back from that Western Clover Loop uh, until you get to about Chinatown is where the race gets really, really quiet. Uh, there are a couple of local run crews that do a really good job of trying to keep everyone excited, like Edge Athlete Lounge and Three Run Two uh, along Pilsen. They're there to make sure everyone can keep moving, but it is a tough part of the race as well. And that's where a lot of people start to fall off because they got too excited in miles 14 
through 18. Uh, at the end of the race, you're gonna wanna watch out for Mount Roosevelt, which isn't really a mountain, but it is about, I think, a, a 25 to 40 foot elevation. It's just an overpass that you're going up before you make that final left turn onto Columbus Drive uh, for the home stretch. Now, as you're coming up Michigan Avenue, before you get to Mount Roosevelt, uh, it does tend to get really windy there, even if it's a not windy day. There's just kind of like an urban canyon effect that it always feels like there's a pretty strong headwind on the plus side there's going to be a lot of people that are in that area giving a lot of energy so I feel like it tends to balance out but just know that it will be challenging in that last mile fortunately this race does a really good job of letting you know how much of the race is left not only are there the regular mile markers and then there's that 40 kilometer marker uh, but you'll also see like a one mile to go 800 meters to go 400 meters to go kind of signage as well which I always definitely appreciate after you come up the hill on Roosevelt, know that as soon as you make that turn, that's usually a pretty good spot to start your kick, depending on your level of fitness and what kind of race time that you're hoping for. Uh, that's usually where I start thinking, all right, whatever I got left, that's the time to give it, lay it all out there and come down that finisher's shoot. So hopefully if you followed all those tips, you had a really great marathon day and you can enjoy some of the beers that you'll get before you leave kind of like the finishers area. Goose Island usually does a great job of providing plenty of delicious custom brews for the Chicago Marathon. And then afterwards, you can get to gear check really easily. It's a little bit of a walk, but it's very well organized and very well laid out. And then further along, that's where you're going to be able to meet up with your family and enjoy some other post-race festivities. So if you have any other questions or any other top tips that I forgot to mention, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet stop by the live stream that I'm going to do this week, Monday through Wednesday. Hopefully I'll see you guys there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?